Thanks, Matthew. Um, so yeah, today I'll be talking about the making of Little Inferno, uh, or the many mistakes we made while making Little Inferno, because there were many. Um, so quick overview, uh, Tomorrow Corporation is myself, uh, Kyle Gabler, and Alan Blomquist. We met uh, roughly 10 years ago at uh, grad school at uh, the Entertainment Technology Center in CMU. Um, after that, we all kind of got jobs and internships at various EAs. Um, I went to EA Tiburon um, all the way down in Orlando, and Alan and Kyle were uh, kind of local here. Um, Kyle left to start 2D Boy with uh, Ron Carmel, and I guess like 2007 or six or something like that. They made World of Goo, um, which I'm pretty sure everybody has heard of here. Um, and then they brought on Alan to help with the Wii board. Um, I stayed on at EA and uh, worked and pitched uh, Henry Hatsworth kind of internally, um, which was a DS game, um, about a British guy that drinks a lot of tea and gets in a giant robot and kills things. Um, so what is Little Inferno? Uh, Little Inferno is kind of like that Yule Log uh, station that comes on for 24 hours kind of around November. Um, I don't know if they have that anymore, but you can see it on YouTube for much, much longer. Um, but being that this is an indie title, we couldn't just be inspired by one thing. Um, Miyamoto is famous for drawing inspiration from all of his hobbies and you know that kind of stuff. So uh, I guess gardening kind of led to Pikmin and uh, wandering around in caves and killing bats with a sword led to Zelda. Um, and then getting ripped, uh, I guess, led to Wii Fit. <laughs> Um, we were kind of inspired by ordering lots and lots of things from Amazon Prime um, and then waiting and, and tracking the, the shipments to see when they would arrive and then getting them and opening them. It's all very exciting, as anybody who orders things knows. Um, so Little Inferno is kind of the mixture of the Yule Log with Amazon Prime, in a nutshell. Um, and in, in the game, you uh, basically buy and burn lots and lots of toys that you get from the Tomorrow Corporation catalog. Uh, you buy toys with Tomorrow Bucks, um, you burn them, they give you more coins, and that kind of increasingly escalates in a bizarro economy. Um, and packages take anywhere from five seconds to five minutes to arrive. Um, we kind of found that uh, adding that delayed time uh, increases like delayed gratification, also gives items some value because when we didn't have any time, people would just buy everything at once, chuck them all in, and not see what anything does. Um, each item does something kind of unique, so we wanted to highlight that. Um, but you can speed up the shipment times with tomorrow stamps, uh, which you get as either random drops or from uh, completing combos. Um, our combos are all kind of like uh, wordplay, so uh, the movie night combo is burning like a TV with a corn on the cob, which makes popcorn. Um, and then they get really obtuse later on, uh, so you'll have like the uh, burning the Uncle Sam fireworks with the rushing nesting doll is like the Cold War combo. Um, so yeah. Uh, but you know, despite the fact that this is kind of like a really weird game, people seem to like it. We've uh, since then released on six platforms. We were there for the uh, one of the five indie titles for the Wii U launch, um, which is pretty awesome. Um, we're on PC, Mac, Linux. Uh, last year we popped up on iPad and then later on iPhone. And then at the end of the year, we're up on Android. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, also, it's in seven languages, so if you live in Europe, chances are it might be in your language. Um, there were some IGF nominations last year, um, and we ended up getting the Technical Excellence Award, which was pretty awesome for Alan, since that was like a one-man thing. Um, it was totally confusing for just about everybody who played it, um, but it did sell over a million copies, so that was cool. Um, so yeah, why make a game about something so mundane, about just you know, throwing shit in the fireplace and burning it? Um, so we noticed this bizarre trend in um, games, kind of, I guess, around the time we were thinking of this, where there are these really cutesy kind of games with like really nice repetitive tasks, um, and they stretched on kind of endlessly. And some of them have like weird economics of like indentured servitude and stuff. Um, and we we're like, man, what if all of these awesome games had like a horrible secret underlying them that's just like festering below this cute facade? 
So we wanted, so we decided to make Little Inferno. Um, and now we'll play the trailer. Oh, audio? Oh, hang on. Do we have? Is that my system? Hang on a second. Uh oh, computer fail. Sorry, guys. Um, should I restart quickly? No, it's okay. Anyway, um, yeah, thanks, Windows. I would sing it if I knew the lyrics that good, my voice was good, but anyway, it's basically uh, children. If you haven't seen it, it's up on YouTube, but it's about kids singing about throwing things in the fire and breathing in the flaming potpourri, <laughs> which they're about to do right now. Um, there we go. It's Little Inferno just for me. Anyway, yeah, so it has a really, like, the trailer has a very, like, kind of cute facade, and now the kid's like, oh, but I thought burning things was bad. Well, you're right, but up above the chimney, way up in the sky, it's been snowing for years, and we just don't know why. Sorry, Kyle. Um, our world is getting colder, uh, but, oh, man. All right, sorry, it's been a while, guys. Um, but there's no need for alarm. Just sit by your fire, burn all of your toys, and stay warm. Um, so here's where we get dark. <laughs> Sing Little Inferno just for me. <laughs> I've got the fireplace that burns at 100 million degrees. <laughs> it's Little Inferno just for me. <laughs> and so... Yeah, we released this decidedly grim trailer that starts off very cutesy, kind of like Log, um, if you guys remember Ren and Stimpy. Um, and so Little Inferno is kind of a game that has a, a secret, um, and everything towards in the game kind of drives towards that gradually. Um, so the whole game is supposed to make you feel really uncomfortable the more you play it. So you start off with the first catalog burning really innocuous things, uh, like letter blocks, batteries that explode, uh, corn on the cob that spits out uh, kernels of the internet's popcorn. Um, by the second catalog, you're burning kind of stranger things. Um, so like a leprechaun um, that gives things kind of leprosy or an unhappy elf that has dynamite strapped to his chest or a cat that shoots out huge amounts of excrement and launches upwards. Um, and then... As you start playing, you start to get letters from other people in this world. Um, there's Miss Nancy who owns uh, Tomorrow Corporation uh, and, and made Little Inferno uh, who kind of walks you through and she's like a Paula Dean Oprah mashup. Um, there's the weatherman who kind of increasing, uh, tells you about how the weather is increasingly getting colder and colder. Um, and then there's your neighbor, or a girl you find out is your neighbor, spoilers, um, Sugar Plumps who, um, as the game progresses, she's kind of the character that's one step ahead of you and is, is playing the game. Um, and eventually, as you become better and better friends, even though she's sending you letters and you don't really have a way to respond, um, she burns down her house and dies. Um, and the game gets kind of dark there. Um, so that's like 90% of the game is constrained to this one view, and you're basically looking at this fireplace for the vast majority of your playtime um, in between, you know, looking at this bright, cheery catalog. Um, and that was uh, pretty intentional. Towards the end of the game, once you get your last catalog, you get a letter from this mysterious uh, character who kind of hints, um, who starts convincing you that maybe you should burn down your house. And we'll see. I do need sound. Actually, sound is less important for this one. It's cool. You can pipe it in? All right. Technical assistance here. Well, I don't know if that's going to do it. Anyway, so you get, um, you get a, uh, a letter from this mysterious shadow character. Oh, thanks. Who um, tells you... Now we got to skip it ahead. No, it's cool. We go really fast. This is the problem with a lot of slides. Um, so you get, a, you get a letter from this character. Uh, she kind of tells you how to escape your house. Whoa, okay, there we go. Um, yes, uh, thank you, Matthew. Um, anyway, so you get uh, all of the, the items that you've been kind of gifting to your friend Sugar Plums all this time. You burn them together. It triggers this uh, magical 10th combo, which overrides the fire safety controls in your little Inferno fireplace. 
um, and all of a sudden everything goes kind of crazy. Um, and you find yourself outside of the fireplace um, in this outside world. There we go, eventually it's going to come crashing down. Um, so suddenly we go from this, this, this fireplace, this really casual game, and now it's an adventure game for like the last 10%. Um, and there's an entire town that you're kind of just walking around. It's, it's pretty deserted. There's like nobody out there except for you. Um, everybody's inside playing with their little, infir ah, little inferno fireplace. Um, you meet the mailman, who's this guy that's been actually delivering all of the mail to you behind your back. Like you never turn around and there's this guy that just kind of comes in and drops off all the packages. Um, and you just kind of wander around until you get to Tomorrow Corporation, um, which you eventually, uh, find your way in by talking with the gatekeeper and get past their high security um, and just wander down the hall until you meet Miss Nancy who tells you that the world is gradually freezing and the, the whole town, everything is kind of freezing to a halt um, just before she jumps into her giant pink, pink rocket ship and takes off, um, presumably to better pastures. Um, and then you kind of just leave the outskirts of the town and go off with the weather weatherman, um, jump in his balloon, um, and sail off to kind of a better future, we hope. Um, so that was mistake number one. It's really risky to put all of your cool content at the end of the game. <laughs> um, which will go directly into mistake number two. So we overthought everything. Um, so back when we started working on this game in like 2010 or maybe 2009 even, we were like, man, this is gonna be six months. Um, our working project name was My Fireplace at that point. It ended up taking like two and a half years. Um, so yeah, like five times the length. And uh, back then we were thinking like, man, it'd be great. So you buy digital stuff, you throw it in this fireplace, and then there are like catalogs and you can buy stuff from the catalogs and then they'll ship to you. Um, and then like the items get really weird. You have like flowers that pop up, there's like popcorn, there are these wooden idols that kind of sing um, when you burn them. Um, and then one day you get a package from the mailman, which is a button that allows you to leave your house. And then you can wander around in this town. Um, it's a snowy kind of town. And you quickly discover it's been snowing for as long as anybody can remember. And, uh, you know, and then there are all these characters. There's Miss Nancy, there are these Christmas carolers, there's another player, there's the mailman, um, and a bunch of other ones, which kind of sounds familiar, um, except, yeah, we went crazy and overscoped. So that was the game we wanted to make. That was the game we ended up making. In between, we kind of went a little nuts. Um, so first, we were going to do this this whole giant world, and uh, it was going to be mostly an adventure game, and then it was going to be uh, there's this weird fireplace mechanic, and you're trading items with people in town, and we would have all of these adventure gamey puzzles, because we like adventure games. Uh, maybe you have to launch like the school bus into the stratosphere, uh, or they're talk with these time-traveling futurists. Um, you know, there's all sorts of kind of odd things. The, but your character is trying to get to Tomorrow Corporation because they burned down his house and he's got like a legal case against them. Um, and we had all these weird characters that you were gonna meet in town. There's Back Alley Bob who deals with bizarre off-market items and this game nerd character and the original developers of Little Inferno who are now uh, homeless um, and crazy. And this uh, coffee guy who's also a motivational speaker. Um, and then there are all these fabulous Tomorrow Corporation employees and more developers and people just kind of standing around outside the gates. Um, and then we started, you know, working on maybe, you know, looking at different art styles for this world uh, that we were excited to build. Um, so really early stuff. And then we were like, man, that's not really enough. So let's add like the subway, which travels through time. Um, <laughs> And in there you will buy tickets and you will use those tickets to advance, uh, to accelerate time so you can get your packages faster. So all of a sudden, you know, you need to go a couple of minutes or like a couple of hours or some days and yeah, why not just hop on the, the Timeline Express. Um, we were gonna have this really crazy uh, puzzle where I guess the last thing you got took 10 years to ship and you either had to figure out some way to break the train to do it or maybe set your system clock forward uh, by 10 years. Uh, but then we are like, yeah, nobody's going to want to do that, so. Um, and then, of course, there's a home decorating metagame because, you know, badges and uh, virtual hoarding is kind of what makes games. So obviously, we need a home decorating section. Um, and then, 
we were going to turn this into like a weird Katamari style game where you're, you're burning shit in the fireplace and then that, that kind of burns down and suddenly you're in the neighborhood and you're burning bigger and bigger things and then you're in the city and you're burning bigger and bigger things and then finally you're at the world and you're burning like planets and satellites and abstract concepts um, and it just kind of got out of control. Um, but fortunately the Wii U uh, became this thing um, so we, you know, kind of took a long, hard look at everything and just went back to kind of the original, tightened everything up, um, and, uh, made it in time. So that was cool. Um, yeah, mistake number three. So we made a game that no one could talk about, um, including us, which is a problem. First of all, it was kind of a weird mechanic that nobody had really done. And when you say, what do you do in the game? Oh, you throw things in a fire and you burn them. Oh, that great. That sounds like fun. Um, so it's kind of like, it, that's kind of a weird concept, but then there's also this kind of secret ending to it that nobody, we didn't want to tell anybody about um, to spoil it. And then there was also, this was also kind of at a time when indie games were being ripped off kind of wholesale rampantly. So we're like, maybe somebody will beat us to market with their own fireplace simulator, weird game with Amazon Prime. So we should probably keep that under until we have something. So um, after working on this for two years, we finally started to release details about the game uh, less than five months before launch. So we announced it on June 28th, just the name and this image, nothing else really. Um, about four months in, we released the trailer um, with the, the little musical teaser um, that I sang for you guys. Um, and then, you know, less than which, you know, we started to get interviews because man, that was a weird uh, teaser. Um, so people wanted to know kind of more about it and we were able to talk about parts of it, but we couldn't really telegraph the end. So we started using really unclear language. Something else is burning. Um, you know, and then, uh, after that we, we ended up spilling the beans to Nintendo Power, um, since we were, uh, shooting to be there and they, we, you know, we, we were really expecting that somebody would spoil the ending and we were really concerned about like, man, maybe that'll, maybe that'll get out. That'll be kind of horrible. Nobody will play this thing, uh, that we've been working on forever. Um, but, and we gave them all of the images for the outside stuff, which they put in there. I mean, they're there. Um, it's kind of cool. They never mention it and nobody actually ever thought that any of that was going to be used in the final game, I guess. Like, just scouring the internet, nobody uh, made that leap, which was awesome. Um, and then finally we launched um, in November and we kind of waited to see what people were going to do. What are people going to say about this weird thing we've made? Um, and we were kind of hoping for like a crying game effect because their whole marketing thing was, if you know the ending, don't spoil it, don't ruin it. And we were like, yeah, that's great. That's exactly what we should do. Um, and that works really well for movies because like, man, you just, you do the same thing. You sit there and you watch something and that's it. Um, but in a game, obviously, you know, oh, the ending is really cool. But up until then, what are you doing? I, I don't know, you're burning stuff. Um, so we started to get reviews and comments from people who had played it and had enjoyed it. Um, but all of their comments were kind of like, well, this is what you do, but you don't really want to know what you do or what this game is about. I don't want to spoil it for you. You don't want to know. Um, and that may have hurt us. Um, so there's that. Oh, uh, this was a fun one. So if you, uh, mistake number four, the message will be missed or misunderstood. So, um, if you have a message in your game, which ours does, uh, Kyle likes messages. Um, chances are, you know, people aren't going to get it. And that's, you know, that's cool. That's fine. Um, so a lot of people thought the game was about global warming. Um, and we have a lot of cool illustrations from people. And like, I mean, I guess it could be, but I mean, truth is we wanted to make a fireplace simulator and it doesn't really make sense to put that in a world where it's always hot or where you have regular seasons. So you kind of want to set that in a place where it's cold all the time. Um, so the world was kind of bent around that. So yeah, not about global warming. Um, and then there was like, man, is this a commentary on freemium games? Um, cause people hate freemium games, I guess. Um, and I mean, not really. Uh, we did like the bright aesthetics and, uh, some of the loops are kind of fun. Um, but I think a lot of people just don't like freemium games and you know, that's cool. Um, a lot of people I know that play them just kind of try to play this meta game where how much of the content can they see without actually spending money. Um, so no, it wasn't really about that either. Um, I mean, what it, 
the, what we were trying to convey um, was kind of something just a bit simpler. Indie games tend to deal with the uh, team's neuroses and ours was, uh, we were all hitting the 30s, so we were starting to feel like old men. Um, and uh, we were kind of concerned just about time and like making most of it and not wasting it. And, um, you know, so it was really more about just kind of um, getting unreaded, getting out of your kind of rut, whether it was like a job you hated or like a bad relationship or anything like that. Um, and in, you know, Little Inferno, everybody's just kind of stuck doing the same thing over and over and over and don't realize there's kind of this whole thing outside of it, um, this whole world. And after a while, people started to pick up on that message. Uh, Aaron Signal uh, was a, a prominent uh, YouTuber, I guess, kind of got it dead on, um, and we started to see other articles that were kind of also grasping onto these themes, um, so that was cool. Um, and then eventually we even saw YouTubers um, started kind of correcting each other. Um, so yeah, the first guy thinks that uh, the Earth is going to freeze up and the sun is getting bigger, so everybody has to escape to other planets. And the other guy's just like, nah, man, you're totally wrong. Um, so. Thanks, Brigiers. Um, <laughs> um, and then our last mistake was not changing the background, which um, was kind of, I mean, we, we, I mean, obviously we're making a fireplace simulator, so it should be in a fireplace. Um, but uh, that led to other problems. Um, so the game feels like a really small game. Um, which, you know, to some degree, it's a fast game. You're supposed to be able to play it in about the length of a long movie, so you can see the kind of cool twist ending and everything. Um, but we ended up actually making a lot of stuff for this game. So we have something like 150 unique assets. Uh, all of the art is different. They all have their own sound effects, VFX. Um, you know, every, everything has kind of a unique reaction, um, which is way more assets than um, World of Goo had and, you know, uh, Henry Hatsworth just... Um, so it was just a lot of stuff to make. Um, the tech was also kind of nuts. So, um, you know, every item um, has like bones and uh, physics and joints and can explode or freeze or uh, disintegrate or affect gravity. They all have unique kind of things that they do. You can pick up a lot of them and just shatter them outright. Um, they also have to know when to blacken and deform depending on how close they are to our uh, fluid simulator. Um, and then, you know, from there to make the fire look believable, uh, fire has to have, like, you know, good fluid sim, also heat distortion, also particles, also a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, and this was all created by one guy because he's, uh, Alan's pretty rad. Um, so it was like, man, yeah, there, there was a lot of stuff kind of going in there to make this this fireplace simulator. Um, but, you know, kind of at the end of the day, it was like, man, you're still looking at the same screen, and when you burn something, it eventually disintegrates and disappears, and you're just back at the same screen. Um, so what can we do? And um, our kind of fix was to d divide the fireplace up into three distinct phases. In the first act, um, when it's just you by yourself, before you figure out you have neighbors, um, it's just a fireplace, there's nothing else kind of there. And in the second act, when you make friends with your neighbor, neighbor Sugar Plump, she gives you curtains that are fireproof. Um, so all right, it's already cozier, and maybe we can change the, the ambience slightly. And then when she uh, burns down her house, uh, the fire proof curtains are kind of destroyed and, uh, you know, it's the third act is kind of somber. You're supposed to be kind of wondering if, you know, uh, if there's something else going on and, um, you know, feel her loss and everything. So the fireplace kind of reflects that as best they can. Um, but, you know, kind of at the end of the day, um, none of that really kind of helped. Um, the fact that we were probably linked to one environment made a lot of people feel that this was a very small game. Um, and you know, that just in the end probably ended up uh, hurting us quite, uh, quite a bit there. Um, but in the end, uh, you know, we made something we were, you know, Little Inferno was a pretty great uh, experience for us. Um, we got a lot of cool uh, emails from people that had played it and said that it helped them get over a relationship or, you know, they cried at the end or um, maybe it made them rethink kind of what they were doing with their own lives, which is kind of weird and awesome for a fireplace simulator. Um, and like on a personal note, uh, for Tomorrow Corporation, it kind of helped Alan and I get out of um, our previous jobs and into the exciting world of indie development. Um, and now that we're basically done with ports and localization and everything, we're just looking forward to moving on to the next thing. So 
That's it. So yeah, I don't know if we have any questions. Show the trailer with sound. How the say again? The misses were real misses. Oh, we saw a lot of comments where people were either confused why it doesn't work on their like ten-year-old Razer phone, or why it's not a free flash game. So, if you say again, oh, sorry, the question was um, how did we? It, it was in regard to the the last mistake um, with the background. How do we know that the people felt that the game was too small? So, oh, any of the mistakes. I mean, I guess we can't really know. I do know that when we overthought it and it took forever, that was definitely a mistake. We wish we could have taken those years back and made some other stuff too. That would have been cool. Um, but and and the last one for sure, just from the way people have reacted to it over time. But um, yeah, I guess that's our best guess. Um, anybody else? There are also microphones up here. I don't know if they work. Do you have any stats on how many players reach the end? Or Say again? Uh, do you have any stats? As on how many players reach the end? Yeah. Um, no, we could not track that, unfortunately, without probably getting kicked out by piracy stuff. I don't know. Um. So um, when you kind of mentioned the scope, kind of how some of this original idea was so huge and how maybe because of the box you guys were given for time and what have you, you ended up kind of focusing so much more on just the burning mechanic. Do you feel like the previous design was really large in breadth and then you started evolving the design in depth in kind of one core mechanic? Or was it always going to be as deep as it is in that mechanic? Oh, for the burning? Yeah. Yeah, we kind of wanted the burning to be... The burning was meant to be about as deep as it is now. Okay. Um, and that was just took way longer than we were expecting. Um, so we would have loved to have built a world and done this kind of huge thing, but with like three guys and only two of them doing art and only one of them doing art well. My art kind of sucks. Um, it was just too much for us to take on. Gotcha. Um, and it was also really good to focus. I don't know if having that would have added uh, a whole lot more. Cool. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. Um, time for one last question, maybe? All right. Oh, sorry. You, sir. And just merge them together. Um, geez. Well, the front, I mean, the, the burning took the longest, obviously. Um, just the technology kind of took that in itself was probably a couple of years. Um, and nailing in on the back half was, I mean, it's quite a bit faster. That's known that was probably a few months, I guess. But we were doing all this kind of stuff in parallel, so. All right. Um, thanks for coming, guys. And uh, remember to rate us online if you like it. <laughs>